Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're gonna be doing a quick little overview on how I manage my nutrients, my TDS levels, and what nutrients I use in my hydroponic system. I've been receiving a few questions from my viewers in the comment sections below. Thank you guys very much. Keep putting questions there and I'll keep answering them. Let's get to it. So before we go inside and check out the nutrients and start measuring it out, we need to see the concentration of our water. You can use many types of water, tap water, distilled water, rain water, you name it. What I have here is a combination of tap water and rain water. This water already has nutrients in it, so we're gonna test it and see exactly how it is. To do so, I use a TDS meter. These are very, very inexpensive on eBay. And uh, you just buy it, comes in the mail, and you test it. I didn't calibrate this in any sort of fashion. I didn't do anything. These could also tell you the temperature, but that's not really important to me. Some people do check the pH. I particularly don't check the pH. It doesn't matter to me. I've had wonderful growth. And online you'll see different ways that people manage their nutrients and they test all kinds of little things. I just do what works and what seems to be working for me. So let's take a look. Let's turn this on. This is a little broken. I dropped it a couple times. But if it's within three digits, anywhere from zero to nine, 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 it'll show it here. If not, it'll have it times one and then show it uh, in thousands. So let's see. There you can see it's about 660 something. The last digit doesn't really matter. You might want to test it a couple times. I've heard people getting strange uh, readings when they test it near the, the edge of the bin. Doesn't really make a difference for me. I just make sure to turn off the aeration when I test it. So about 650, as you can see there. I think I could put hold and it'll, it'll hold it. 640 something, the last digit's missing. So with this reading, I, I immediately know that I need to add nutrients, but I already know this because I added water the other day to top it off and that normally dilutes the nutrients. I try to keep it anywhere between 800 and about 1200. Again, you can look up charts on how high or how rich you want your nutrient solution, but I normally run it around there and uh, everything seems to be thriving. So let's go back inside and take a look. It starts off with the Master Blend Tomato Formula. This is the 41838 tomato and vegetable formula. It is not only for tomatoes and vegetables. I use this across the board with lettuce, basil, cilantro, leafy greens, my figs, everything in my system gets the same exact nutrients. It gets the master blend 41838, it gets the calcium nitrate, and it gets the Epsom salt. Laid out on the master blend is the directions for creating a recipe for five gallons of nutrients from scratch. This is straight from tap water or very low PPM distilled water or something of that nature. I will not be following this verbatim because as we recall, my system already had about 600 PPM or 650 rather of nutrients. I will, however, be following the same ratio, not specifically the grams, but I will be adding the same amount by volume of each nutrient. The amount of nutrients I need to get from about 600 PPM to close to a thousand is anywhere between a third cup and a quarter cup of each nutrient into the reservoir. All I do is scoop it out in about equal parts, eyeballing. You can use a scale. This indicates here that you can use either by volume or by weight. I don't recommend using a scale because this adds more complexity to what you're trying to do. I just throw it all in here and wing it. Remember, you could always add more nutrients. You can't really take them out. If your concentration is too high, your only real solution would be to remove some of the nutrients, uh, the nutrient solution rather, and add in water to dilute it. But you could always go back and add more if you're PPM or your, your readings are too low. Remember, you wanna keep these sealed after you open them. They do attract water and moisture and they will, they will clump up and get really strange on you or sticky. So you wanna put these in an airtight container and you also don't wanna mix them already. It might seem intuitive to mix them, but you will get a chemical reaction between them all and you don't wanna risk messing up your nutrients. Remember, at the end of the day, you can buy these on eBay. They come in a three-part kit. They can be pet purchased separately, but I recommend just getting the kit. It's inexpensive and it lasts very long. So from here, I add this in here. I have a, anywhere between one third to a quarter cup in between of each nutrient, and I just pour it into my reservoir. 
I just add water here, mix it up, and throw it in. Again, the instructions state here that you can adjust your pH and that you probably should, but I don't, and I've had great results. Let's go outside and throw it in the reservoir. Out here, I've already dumped in about half. I still have some remaining in here. You just throw it in there. You could also grab a little stick and mix it around, but I kind of just leave it there and let it do its thing. I really don't want to be here uh, working this too long outside in the heat. Okay, so we're gonna come back a little bit later and recheck it with our TDS meter. It's been about 30 minutes now. Everything has been circulated. I had my air stones on. I had my circulation pumps uh, that, that go to both of these systems left and right, my buckets, everything. I have checked, checked the TDS or PPM on all my buckets to make sure that they match and they are the same as the reservoir, letting me know that it's circulated throughout the whole system. So let's test it right now. So here you can see it's 105 and there's a times one, okay? And what that tells you is that this is a thousand. It's just missing the last digit. So it's 1,050 something. Okay, let's take it again to make sure. Same reading, 1,050 something. This is right in the ballpark of where I want it. If it was too high, I would remove some of the nutrient solution and put in water to dilute it. If it was too low, I would go and add some more. So there you have it, that's how we do it. I'm gonna flip the camera back around now and conclude this. Let's wrap up this video now. I'm gonna do a quick little overview of all the nutrients that I put in my system and the tools that I use to measure it. We're kicking it off right now with the Master Blend Tomato Formula. Remember, all three of these nutrients usually come as part of a kit that you can buy on eBay. It's very inexpensive and it lasts very, very, very long. So this is the first one, Master Blend Tomato Formula 41838. It might say tomato formula, but I use these three parts in all of my systems, whether it's fruits, vegetable, leafy greens, basil, tomatoes, you name it. I use it for absolutely everything. So we start with the first part, the main part, 41838 Master Blend, followed by calcium nitrate, 15.500, and the last one, Epsom salt, magnesium sulfate, okay? You can buy these parts separately or you can buy it all together. Like I said, they're available on eBay. They're very inexpensive. So from here, I would say you would need a TDS meter, my trusty TDS meter. This is what tells you the concentration of nutrients in your hydroponic system, okay? It, some people call it PPM meter, TDS meter, EC meter, nutrient concentration meter. You name it, it's got a bunch of names. Like I said earlier on in the video, I like to keep my concentration anywhere between 800 and 1200 because I have a lot of fruiting vegetables like tomatoes, peppers, and my beautiful figs that you might see in the other videos. So like I said, I measure all of these nutrients by volume. I already know through trial and error that one third to a quarter cup of each nutrient listed before will bring my PPM from about 600 to that 1050 ballpark area where I wanna be. Eventually, you guys will learn exactly how much you need to put in there to maintain that level. Remember, you can also check the pH. I don't like checking the pH because I'm not here to micromanage my garden. Okay, the reason I have pumps and, and reservoirs and all this stuff going on is to kind of automate it a little bit. Yeah, it's one more step. It can bring me bigger, better fruits, but I just don't want to keep adding stuff and increase the complexity of my system. To close this video out, I'd like to thank you all, the viewers and subscribers. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for the thumbs up. I encourage you all to leave comments. This specific video is a response to one of the viewers. They asked me how I manage and maintain my nutrients in the, in the system. Keep asking questions and I'll keep answering them. Till next time, peace.